hello everyone so last time we were discussing the properties of the material so to understand the next property let's first understand strain energy so let's first write the definition of strain energy so it is defined as defined as the internal work done to deform deform a body by the action of externally applied forces so according to this definition what is strain energy it is the internal work done to deform a body so to understand that let's say we take a steel bar and we apply this load p on it so this load is gradually applied here that is initially it is zero then it increases to p so what will happen inside this material or inside the bar because of this load there will be stresses in the material and let's say there is a deformation of delta l in this bar so that is strain will also be there in this material now let's try to write the external work done external work done due to this load p so work done is nothing but force times displacement So force here is changing from 0 to P. So average force we can write is P by 2 into displacement is delta L. That is your work done. That is external work done. Now if we assume that there is no energy loss or in other words, if this is a perfectly elastic body, then we can say this external work done is equal to internal work done so as for this definition internal work done is nothing but the strain energy so this becomes the strain energy as well so strain energy is denoted with u so u is equal to 1 by 2 p into delta l so this is one form of this equation we can rewrite this equation to get other forms so this load p we can write it as stress into area and delta l we can write it as strain is equal to delta l by i mean change in length by original length so from here change in length is equal to epsilon times l so that is epsilon into l so from here we get u is equal to half sigma epsilon and a into l is nothing but the volume of the bar or volume of this material it is a l so this is v so this is another form here and we can further write in it in another form that is this strain we can write it as stress divided by modulus of elasticity so from that it becomes half sigma square upon e times volume so this is another form of this equation and there is one last that is u is equal to half now we can write this stress as p by a so p square by a square e into the volume is again a into l so from here u is equal to p square l upon 2 a e so these are the various forms of this equation now why we are interested in this strain energy because if we are talking about an elastic body elastic body then this elastic body has a property it can store this energy store this energy when the when some external force is applied and this energy can be recovered when this external force external force is removed so this energy becomes usable to us that's why we are interested in this strain energy so based upon that the next property is defined that is resilience so resilience is the property due to which due to which 
a material is able to store energy without having permanent deformation that is we, the material when strained or when the load is applied this material can store the energy and this energy does not cause that permanent deformation because when this load is removed then this energy is released and this energy can be used so this type of action is used in case of spring so this resilience property is very useful to find out which material would be better for the spring action and so to quantify this resilience there is this modulus defined that is modulus of resilience so the strain energy what be what we derived previously it can also be derived from the stress strain curve so because we are interested up to this elastic limit because that's what the energy is which can be recovered so the area under this curve here gives you the strain energy as well so that is the area would be half stress times stress so that is the strain energy strain energy per unit volume because earlier we defined strain energy as this half epsilon e into volume this one here so here we can say this is the strain energy per unit volume and this strain energy per unit volume is nothing but the modulus of resilience after that next property we have toughness so toughness is the property due to which due to which the material can withstand impact loading without fracture so that is the material can be strained but it will not produce strain but no fracture so the material which can take more strain without fracture will be the tougher material so to define toughness there is this modulus defined that is modulus of toughness so again in the stress strain curve let's say if we take the stress strain cur curve up to the fracture this last point and this area here area under the curve so that gives the modulus of fracture that is the strain energy stored up to fracture per unit or we can say divided by the volume of the material so that's how modulus of toughness is defined so which material would be tougher the material which can take which can take more strain up to fracture so with that logic the ductile material ductile material would be tougher than tougher than the brittle material so with that logic mild steel would be more tough i mean mild steel would be tougher than cast iron